In October of 1994, I embarked on a journey with my mother. One I guess we'd always been on, but I don't really think either of us knew it at the time. It marked a milestone in our relationship. I say milestone because even though she died 11 months later in September of 95, the relationship continues. And so unlike previous Headlines productions, the play we're going to experience here tonight begins in my story, my journey with my parent. Now, of course, the people who are the actors in the play this evening are not me. And the spect actors, as Augusta Boal would say, the members of the audience and the members of our at-home audience uh, who have the potential to participate in the forum with us here tonight are not us, they are you. And so by the time we're finished, we will have peeled away the layers of this room's story and our home audience's story here this evening. My name is David Diamond, and my role is the Joker, the wild card. And um, I have a question for you. Uh, who here in the theater has ever been to a forum theater event before? Can I see some hands, please? Okay, some of you. Um, some of you might not have any idea what you're at. Those of you who are tuning in at home probably don't have any idea what you've just tuned into. Um, this is a different kind of theatrical event tonight. For those of you who know Forum, you're going to sense a bit of a difference in the way things go. I've changed the rules a little bit. For those of you who've never been to a Forum, yeah, very sh briefly, here's a bit of what's going to happen. Um, we're going to show you a play. It's about 20 minutes long. I'm going to ask you to watch it through particular eyes and try to identify characters in the play who you believe are in struggle, either with something inside themselves or something outside themselves. And think of ways that you might have to um, navigate your way through the relationship that they're in differently, so that you deal with the situations they're in, uh, in a he perhaps in a healthier way than happens in our play. After we show you the play the first time, you're going to get a chance to process some of those ideas. Those of you here in the theater, here on the stage, people at home, We'll have a chance to do that uh, by calling in and talking to an actor on the phone, and the actor will do it for them on, on their behalf. Um, I'm going to come back after the play and talk a little bit about how that's going to be, so please don't worry about that just yet. Just watch the play for the first time. Okay? Here we go. I can understand that this puts you in a difficult position, but I need to know. We want to run a few more tests. <laughs> you know from everything I can figure out here, talking with other doctors, it looks like cancer of the pancreas. What do you think? Well, that's what we're thinking here too. Have you talked to her? No. But that is what we're dealing with, right? Yes. So it's terminal, right? Yes. Don't tell her until I get there, okay? It might take a day or two. Can you come to a place Wednesday at 2 o'clock? I can't be there until 2.30, is that all right? Okay, I'll see you then. Okay. Dr. Palmer. Yes? How long? Alan, cancer of the pancreas is hard to diagnose. Often by the time we find it, the pancreas is pretty well overwhelmed. After that, things move rather quickly. Uh-huh. Two months at the outside. Okay, thank you. Okay. I just had breakfast on the plane, really. Well, I can make you something. I'm not hungry. I don't know why you had to fly all the way out here. Had a visit from the doctor before. Mm -hmm. 
Mom, why don't you sit down? <gasps> Sorry, I just stink the place up. It follows me around. I, I, I can't go out. Open up a window. Hello? Hi, I'm coming up. Mom, Mom, Mom. It's okay, it's okay. Hi. Hi. Hello, Doctor. It was good of you to come. Um, uh, you know my son? How was your flight? It was okay. So, I, uh, how are you feeling? I'm okay, I guess. I've been better. <laughs> Have you been enjoying the nice weather? Who can go anywhere smelling like this? I'm afraid to even go across to the mall. Ida, I'm afraid I don't have good news. So, what else is new? I've run the test by various colleagues. The reason for the pain, the weight loss, your gas, the jaundice. I'm afraid it's cancer, Ida. Oh, God. Cancer of the pancreas. Both my parents. There's nothing we can do for it, Ida. It's terminal. It's terminal. How long? A year. A good year, a full year, Ida. We'll have to get into pain management, though. Morphine. There's one thing that I can promise you, though. There'll be no pain. There's no reason for there to be any pain. Alan, this flying back and forth can't be good. What do you want me to do? You live here, your doctors are here. And you aren't going to move there. And I can't move here. So I'm flying back and forth. It must be expensive. Oh, never mind. You'll get it back. What are you talking about, Mother? Look, Mom. There are other things that we need to discuss. Like what? Decisions are going to have to be made that I don't want to have to make. I mean, there are decisions that you should make. Where, where do you want to be? How am I supposed to know? I want to be here. As long as I can manage. Where do I want to die? Is that what you're asking? What a question to have to answer. In the hospital, where they can take care of me, where I won't be a burden. Okay. Well, near the end, they might need to put you onto machines. No. Time for your morphine, Ida. No machines.
They're busy out there right now, Mom. What do you want? Can I help? No! We'll get a nurse. She'll clean everything up. It's all right. Time for your morphine, Ida. shutting down. It's going to move up your body. Are you in any pain? No. Okay. I'll see you again. Um, I wish I I wasn't sleeping so much. Well, that may be the medications. We'll try and adjust that, okay? Okay. You're the doctor. That's right. Just push the call bell if you need anything. Mm -hmm. 
Time for your morphine, Ida. Time for your morphine, Ida. Okay, I've got some more ice. It's been two days since you ate anything. Don't you want to try? Look, Mom. If I could find a way, if I could end this, would you want me to? Why not? I don't want to put that burden on anyone. She started having a lot of trouble breathing. Her lungs were filling with fluid. The edema. She was drowning. She would have died. They came in with a plastic hose and said it would be best if I went into the family room because this was going to be unpleasant. Then, with her awake, they put the tube down her throat and vacuumed her out. I stood outside listening to her gagging and choking and groaning. They tortured her so she wouldn't die.
time. I already yeah. miss you. That's not the point. Who is it you are protecting, Master Alan? Her. I'm protecting her. Me, okay? I'm protecting me. I'm protecting the both of us. Her memory. I'm protecting my memory of her. Alan, honey, if you start this, you're going to have to steal the truth. I know, Mom. I know. I can do this. The thing is that if she was somebody's pet dog, she'd be put out of her misery by now. She's not a dog, and I'm not a vet. You promised she wouldn't be in any pain. She's not telling me or the nurses that she's in any pain. Of course not. <coughs> she's a doctor. Every time you walk in the room, she rallies her spirits up so you won't think there's anything wrong with her. This is crazy. Alan, I never said this wasn't going to be complicated. Pain is a relative thing. Her body's going through a lot of changes. She is dying, after all. Death isn't pretty. What is that supposed to mean? No, Dr. Palmer. I came here to see my mother's physician and I feel like I'm talking to a lawyer. Would you ask my mother's doctor to walk into this room, please? What exactly is it that you'd have me do? You know exactly what I would have you do. She's not asking that of me. I know she's not, but I'm her son and I'm asking for her. The opportunity that we have here tonight is not to end up back here again at the end of this play. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. While the cast and crew are resetting for the beginning of the play, I want to have a little chat with you. Um, Here's what's going to happen. We're going to play this play for you again. This second time through, if you see a character who you believe is in struggle, either with something inside themselves or with something outside of themselves, and you have an idea about how by taking their place, by taking the place of the character who is in struggle, you can navigate your way through the situation they're in, deal with the situation differently, so that we don't end up back here again at the end of the play. Those of you here in the theater, I want you to yell, stop. The action here will freeze. You'll come out of the playing area here, uh, out of, sorry, out of the audience area, here into the playing area. Take that character's place, the place of the character who you see as being in struggle, and try out your idea. For those people at home, what's going to happen is this. Obviously, you can't run out here to the theater. So you're going to be making telephone calls. There are two numbers. The numbers are 644-8379 and 644-9653. Um, you'll call one of those numbers. You'll talk to an actor on the phone. And that actor will ask you, ask you some questions. And that actor will come into the theater and do the intervention on your behalf. Um, now, I know this might sound a little scary. Uh, but, um, <laughs> You know, we've been doing this for about a week and a half now, and I know that uh, we're going to have a very lively evening here tonight. Um, before we get into that, there's, you know, we do warm-ups in the theater, and I'm going to do some warm-ups with you. Uh, first, a little brain thing. Um, did anybody actually manage to look at the puzzle in the program before we started the show? Who looked at it? Can I see some hands? Oh, good, lots of you. That's really good. Um, Here's the puzzle here on the silver again. Now I'm interested to know, you know, the, the task here was to connect up the nine dots by making four straight lines. Once you start, you don't take your pen off the page. Um, I'm interested in knowing if anybody who didn't already know the answer before you got here today figured it out here. Did anybody do that? Somebody? Anybody else? Somebody else? Would one of you, somebody, uh, would you come and share with us here in the overhead, please, somebody? Come. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to check your program first. Let's just see if it's right. Yeah. 
yes, that is indeed the answer to this puzzle. Thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, what is this? Talk to me. What is this about? Anybody? Going outside the boundaries. Going outside the boundaries. Anything else? Not being afraid to try something different. Not being afraid to try something different. Somebody up there said something? Perceptions. Perceptions, yeah. Of course, all those things are true. The, the thing that I, the reason I wanted to do this before this forum, um, we all have rules. You know, some rules are good rules. A little kid learns not to put their hand on an element because it's going to burn their hand. That's a good rule. But as we've prepared this play, and I've talked to all kinds of people about death and dying, I've come to realize that we have all kinds of rules about death and dying. And I want to challenge you here tonight, the people at home, to break those rules this evening that you have around death and dying. Uh, to challenge yourselves to step outside the boundaries that we have. You know, this puzzle is about stepping outside the boundaries of the box. And also to acknowledge, you know, that our play is its own box. And perhaps the solutions to our play exist outside the boundaries of our play. So this is all about breaking the rules. Also breaking the rules of the theater. Normally you sit there and we are here. <laughs> and we're going to break those rules big time tonight so that you can come. <laughs> um, OK, one other thing. Uh, a, a brain warm-up and a physical warm-up. Just do this with me, please. Just bear with me. You can do this at home, too. Uh, with your right hand, make an X in the air. OK, good. And with your left hand, at the same time, keep going, keep going. With your left hand, at the same time, make an O. Oh, come on. We'll try this. It's OK. Who can do this? You can stop. You can stop. Can anybody do this? <laughs> well, I'll expect many of you here anyway tonight, even though nobody can do this. I'm hoping somebody at home can do this. I'm getting uh, signals to turn my mic on, but it's on. It is indeed on. Okay, um, we're going to begin. Once again, if you see somebody who you believe is in struggle, and you have an idea about how by replacing that character you can navigate your way through the situation, deal with the situation differently so that we don't end up back at our ends of the play. And there are many, many places in the play where that could happen. I want you to yell, stop. The action here will freeze. You'll come out of the audience area here into the playing area. Take that character's place who you believe is in struggle and try your idea. Once again, for the people at home, the way you'll do this, you'll call one of two numbers, 644-8379 or 644-9653. You'll talk to an actor on a phone, that actor will ask you, ask you some questions, and we'll come in here and do your, the intervention for you. A couple other things. This isn't a test here tonight. <laughs> Sometimes we learn the most important lessons by ideas that come onto the stage that don't succeed in solving the problem. Um, because we learn what not to do in a given situation. Also, whatever the idea is will give somebody else an idea, that will give somebody else an idea, and in that way we go deeper and deeper into an investigation of the issues. It's important also for you to know that you're not going to get trapped here. You get to go back to your seats. Uh, maybe your idea takes 30, minute, uh, 30 seconds, maybe 60 seconds. I hope it doesn't take 30 minutes. You don't have time for that. Um, but then you get to go back to your seat. Also, you know, we're not looking for magic here tonight. Um, I mean that in a couple of ways. I'm going to ask you to work inside the parameters of our characters. You might have a desire for the doctor to be a different doctor, or for Alan to be a different son, or for Ida to be a different mother. They are the characters who they are. Dr. Palmer is not a palliative care physician. Please. Restrain yourself from trying to turn him into one. He is engaged in his own struggles, and they're important to investigate. But try not to change the physician who he is. Same with Alan, same with Ida. And one last thing before we start. Ida is going to die. That's a given. Our, our task this evening is to try to find a way 
to help her and the people around her, all of us, do that well. And that's our opportunity here tonight. Okay? We're going to start from the beginning of the play. Here we go. <laughs> I can understand that this puts you in a difficult position, but I need to know. You want to run a few more tests. Uh -huh. You know, from everything I could figure out, from talking to other doctors, it looks like cancer of the pancreas. What do you think? Well, that's what we've been thinking here, too. Have you talked to her? No. But that is what we're dealing with, right? Yes. So it's terminal, right? Yes. Don't tell her until I get there, okay? It might take a day or two. Can you come? Wednesday at 2 o'clock to a place? I can't be there until 2.30, is that all right? Okay, I'll see you then. Okay. Dr. Palmer. Yes. How long? Alan, cancer of the pancreas is hard to diagnose. Often by the time we find it, the pancreas is pretty well overwhelmed. After that, things move rather quickly. Uh-huh. Two months at the outside. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, before we move on. Um, your silence around this scene is an indicator to me of something, but I, I want to check to see that it's true. Um, uh, your silence tells me that you think that what's happening between the son and the doctor is happening the way it should. Um, could I see some hands? Who thinks it's happening the way it should? Okay, a couple of you. Who thinks it should happen in a way other than it's happening? Could I see some hands? Okay. And who doesn't want to vote? Because they're going to drag you down. <laughs> I'm not going to drag any of that. That's not going to happen this evening, okay? But there are instances in this very first scene that affect the whole rest of the play. And it's very important that we not let them go by. Forum theater is like a VCR. You can rewind it any time you want. I'm going to take that prerogative and do that now. Because there's moments here I don't want you to miss. So we're going to take, start from this scene again. Um, and I'm going to give you a second chance at it. Here we go. I can understand that this puts you in a difficult position, but I need to know. We want to run a few more tests. Uh -huh. You know, from everything I could figure out here, talking with other doctors, it looks like cancer of the pancreas. What do you think? Well, that's what we're thinking here, too. Have you talked to her? No. Stop. Stop. OK, come. Can I do it from here? No, you cannot do it from here. <laughs> <laughs> you knew the answer to that question. <laughs> Who is it you would replace? Uh, it's the doctor didn't. Okay, so don't tell me. Just, just yeah. You believe that the doctor is struggling with something, and you can help him through the struggle with that. Is that right? Yeah, no, okay. I want to be really clear about this because this sets the tone for the whole evening. You might disagree with what he did, but it's different to just change what he did and do what you think is right, and engage in the struggle that he's in to work through his fears, whatever it is around the situation. There's a difference there. So who do you think is, is in struggle here in the scene? Both? Pick one. <laughs> the doctor. Yes. Sorry. Okay. I will ask you then to engage in the struggle that he's in. Okay? I'm going to give you this one. Okay. So, so where do you want to go from? Well, when you started to say pancreas, that your friend said... Okay, that he's talking to the doctors and he thinks it's cancer and pancreas. Here we go. He's the mic. You know, from everything I could figure out here, talking with other doctors, it looks like cancer of the pancreas. What do you think? I think that you have the right information, but that's not between your mother and I. Pardon me? That would be correct information, but it's information between your mother and I. I can't confirm that diagnosis. You can't confirm it. So why can't other doctors, why can't they confirm it and you can't? Patient, doctor, confidentiality. Mm-hmm. I see. So. So what happens? Tell me. What, what's going to happen? Well, I'll meet with your mother and, uh, and other doctors and ask her to seek out another opinion. Pardon me? I'll meet with your mother uh -huh. and give her my diagnosis and then ask her to seek out other opinions if she chooses. Mm. When are you going to meet with my mother? As soon as she's available. So it's important, huh? Uh, it's important to her health, yeah. So it, so it could be right then, huh? That would be her choice whether she wants to share that information with you. But it's pretty bad, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop this year. What's your name?
Okay, thank you, Mitch. <laughs> okay, you're not going to tell her. Uh, you, you stated the reasons clearly because of doctor patient uh, <coughs> confidentiality. Well, the bigger moral issue is locus of control. Mm -hmm. The son and the doctor have taken another's locus of control away from the illness. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, do you work in the field? No, really. Not, not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It's true. Alan is putting the doctor in a very difficult position. I want to ask you folks something. Do you, do you recognize Alan's need to know? Who does? Can I see some hands? Yeah, many of you recognize his need to know. Uh, uh, and, so, um, and so it's a real issue. <coughs> you could confirm the seriousness of the illness without going on that step. Mm -hmm. And really, that's a matter for a son to discuss with his mother, not for the doctor to discuss with his son. I agree. So the, the question it leaves me with is, considering the, you know, the, the logic of all this and the reality of it, what do we do? Does anybody have another idea that is different from this one? This, one's, this one opens up a lot of important information. Thank you very much. You know what the scene is. What do we do? Anybody have a different idea? Come. Who would you replace? Intervention is to replace the doctor. There is the telephone. And I'm also going to give you the money. Where do you want to go from? From the same place? Same place. Uh, from the doctors, I talk to some of the cancer pancreas. What's the son's name? Alan. Alan. <laughs> you know, from everything I could figure out here, talking with other doctors, it looks like cancer of the pancreas. What do you think? Alan, I think you should probably come out here and uh, meet with me and your mother as soon as you can. Huh. Oh boy, so it's true. It's not right for me to talk to you before I talk with your mother, but it would be good if we could talk together, all three of us. Um, but, okay. Um, but I just gotta know, I mean, I, it's a, it's a, you know, you have to understand that I'm really busy in my work here, you know, and I have to take a plane, I have to stop everything in order to go there. Do you understand? I do. I think in this case it's appropriate. In this oh, case, uh, could you possibly make it on Wednesday? Wednesday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, we got it. Come on, there. Well, Alan, he's opened up a window for you, right? He hasn't told you. But, yeah, but there's a door here. Um, when he comes, well, first of all, are you going to come? I think I got the hint <coughs> that <laughs> Okay, we're speaking in cold. I mean, you're, you're, kind of, you're telling him, but you're not telling him. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're protecting the, the kind of, if I can call it, the legal relationship. I know it's, it's more than that. There's a moral relationship. You haven't said the words to him. But you're trying to give him what he needs in order to get on a plane and get here. Yeah. Are you coming? Yeah. And you're going to talk to him privately first? Or is that going to happen just over there? Um, I'm not really clear on that, but it, it seems that the, uh, the correct thing for the doctor to do, being as generous as he can be with the son, is to tell the mother in the presence of the son. Right. So you're trying to orchestrate it, and you're trying as much as possible to keep everybody happy. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we're going to move on. Alan is down here. Just before we do, I'm going to remind the folks at home that the way to call in and do an intervention here in this forum is to call one of two numbers, 644-8379 or 644-9653. You'll talk to an actor. Give them the idea that you have for how to replace one of the characters in the play engaging in their struggle and see if we can deal with this in a healthier way than we are. Um, you'll talk to an actor, that actor will come in and do it for you. Okay, here we go. Are you, uh, are you sure I can't get you something to eat? I just had breakfast on the plane, really. No, I can make something. I'm not hungry. I don't know uh, why you had to fly all the way out here. 
had a bishop on the doctor before. Mom, why don't you sit down? <gasps> Sorry. I just stepped the place up. Follows me around, I can't go out. Open up a window! <laughs> Stop. Stop. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd you replace? Actually, I'm not replacing anyone. I'm adding a character. Okay, who'd you add? Um, I'm, is it okay? I, I'm, I don't know if it's the same scene or not, but I'm, I want to come with the doctor. You want to, you want to come with the doctor? Yeah, who I'm are you? I'm a patient advocate. You're a patient advocate. <laughs> okay, I want to check on something. Could the doctor come out here, please? <laughs> Uh, we have a request for a patient advocate to come with the doctor. In order for that to happen, what would have had to happen? It would have been a difficult situation, especially because Ida doesn't necessarily know the news yet. Usually that would be initiated by the patient or somebody that knew the patient, that knew the patient's needs needed to be addressed. Um, okay, so I would have had to request this. Is that Or Alan, maybe. Alan, you, uh, would you have done this? Would you have requested an advocate to be here with the doctor? Does that make okay? Uh, I, you, you don't really know. Anything. I don't know. It's important that we keep. Uh, this would be a magic intervention for me. <laughs> this this person can't appear but out of nowhere. If the doctor knows that these people don't know anything about it, but knows that they're going to need help because of the communication problem. Yeah. Uh, would Doctor Palmer? Uh, I, would he bring somebody with him in this situation? Dr. Palmer probably would. Yeah, I, yeah. You have an idea, and I'm going to ask you if you can do your idea uh, now, but through one of the characters on the stage. Okay, I guess it would be Alan. Okay, intervention would be to replace Alan, okay. which is who was the natural advocate for Ida. Right. Okay, come. Where would you go from? Uh, when the doctor Intervention is to go. Uh, Doctor Palmer is coming. Is coming in the door. Uh, he's already broken the news. Ida. Oh, okay. We're moving forward then. Okay. Um, he's told Ida the diagnosis. We're going to jump forward a bit. Okay. I'm going to just be here with the mic. Is that okay? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Sorry that it's not good news, Ida. You can't. You can't help it. Is there um, any kind of person that could advise us on what services are there, what kind of rights we have, what kind of planning there might be involved in helping us just get through all the steps that we have to go through? Sure, Alan. I think there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to need to talk about. And certainly there'll be lots of people who we can ask to help. Um, there are a number of people. Is there something specifically that you thought would be helpful now to talk about with your mom? Well, planning for what's coming on ahead, you know, just letting us know what's going to happen and what our rights are and what our alternatives are. And also to help us um, maybe deal with some of the legal issues, you know, like making sure our will, you know, the will is set up and that mom knows what, uh, what kind of things, decisions she has to make because it's, it's all new for both mom and I. And I don't have the answer, so, you know, obviously somebody must know how to deal with all the different pieces. I don't even know what the pieces are and I don't think mom does. And also to help mom and myself through the shock of all of this. Sure, Ellen, we can, we can help answer the questions that you have. I, one of the people I was talking to about um, cancer said that there's a thing called a patient advocates. Would that be something? That is, is, do we have that here? There, there can. You can have a patient advocate. Uh, Alan, right now you're acting as her advocate, and that's mm -hmm. good. And, and Ida can act as her advocate, too. Is that something you want, Mom? What does it mean? 
Okay, I just stop this here before we get into the technicalities of this. Because we can, I think we can see where, where we're going. I, I'm going to ask this Alan something. Because the intervener knows things that, I, that I'm not sure Alan knows. And so that's okay. H how do we know these things? How do people know what you, uh, what you, what you obviously know and are bringing into this intervention? Alan, you come over here. I'm sorry. Yeah. Alan has been doing a lot of research about cancer and the different symptoms that, that his mom has had. And also has been looking into whether or not uh, there's any cures and things like that. And in the literature it may have come up that there's different kinds of services, including a patient advocate or social workers or like whatever to get through the whole process that is coming ahead. Okay, I think that's possible, in fact. Um, you've got the news, you've been talking to doctors uh, at home before you've come here and you've started, stuff is available all over the place, the Cancer Institute, uh, on the web, who knows where, where you've got it from and you've found some stuff that maybe you didn't know before, but you know now and you're trying to use it here. Okay, thank you very much. You know, just before we move on, I, I, this is going to change stuff for you, I imagine, right? If, if, if Alan can do this, yeah. it's going to change many things. Oh. Just one moment. This is going to change many things, yes? This intervention. Well, I don't know what it will do. I mean, I don't, I don't know what it will do. Uh, the thing that's happening is um, the Alan being strong and taking over and having done some work on it before. Yeah, that's what I mean. Is, is there yeah. somebody in charge here that yeah. is different than in our play? And that's going to change things for you. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. Yes. So we have an intervention from yes, both. From Mary from West Vancouver. Mary in West Vancouver. Who does she want to replace? Hey, Alan. And where are we? Right here. Right here? <laughs> okay, so the doctor is... So the doctor is telling you what's going on. Okay, the doctor is giving the diagnosis. <coughs> here we are. I'm afraid I don't have good news, Ida. So, what else is new? I've run the test by various colleagues. The reason for the pain, the weight loss, your gas, the jaundice. I'm afraid it's cancer, Ida. God. Cancer of the pancreas. Both my parents. There's nothing that we can do for it, Ida. <coughs> Dr. Palmer. Can you explain my mom some of the options or, or at least what palliative care is and what we need care? Can you do that? Sure. I think there's going to be a lot of things that we need to talk about. We can talk a bit about that today if you'd like. Yes, please. Ida, there are a few ways that we can approach this. There's not a lot that we can do to cure the cancer that you have. But what Alan talks about palliative care is an area of medicine that focuses more on comfort, realizing that there's still a lot that we can do to make sure that you're comfortable and that you're able to do what you can do, that there's some dignity, even though we might not be able to cure the cancer. And there are different ways to get that palliative care. Is that what you were wondering about, Alan? I, I like my mom to know a bit more about that, if it's possible. Okay. Is that yeah. yeah. Okay. Convention. Let's come out up here, please. Um, this is Victor. Victor's one of the actors working on the telephone. So, Victor, when you talk to Mary in West Van, the, the, her request is to is to just is to bring up palliative care. Uh, Mary was very clear about. The doctor explained palliative care right on the spot. Okay. She was very wanted very much the mother to know that there is this war that that's palliative care. Okay, I have a question for Dr. Palmer, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. The doctor doesn't do this naturally in in the <coughs> scene, and and w what is that? I think for Dr. Palmer, he is still. It's very hard for him to tell Ida that this is terminal, and that there isn't anything that could be done. Um, 
but he sort of focuses on that it's hard to talk about the actual dying and what that might be and what the options around that are. Okay, this is a, it's a, a good point to tell you something and tell the folks at home something too. Um, if you've been reading the news around the project, you probably know that Fraser here, the actor, is really a doctor and he really is a palliative care doctor and it's important to know that he isn't the doctor that he's playing in our play. <laughs> so you know, if you meet him on the street somewhere, you don't go, hey, you were this loud, you know. Uh, it's important that you know that. Now, having, having explained that, um, when we were preparing this piece, you know, we were acknowledging that palliative care is something that's growing, certainly, but that many people do not die in palliative care hospitals or in palliative care wards or in palliative care beds and not all doctors are palliative care doctors and so the sense of this scene I, I, I want to say of the patient needing or the patient's son in this case needing to ask is very real because this doctor might not do it naturally certainly not to use the word palliative care that would be something that might not be introduced right away or even until very close to the end other physicians might be able to bring that into the conversation as a sense of, well, maybe there isn't hope for a cure, but there is hope. It's always good to focus on hope and talk about that and bring palliative care up in that context. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Mary, very much. Um, while we're stopped here, uh, we went through the scene before the doctor comes in, and I just want to make sure that we're not jumping over something that somebody wanted to do. I, was there an idea before the doctor comes in the room that anybody wants to try? Otherwise, we'll move on. Okay. Um, we're finished with the doctor. Where Alan's going to uh, be serving food. Whoops. We have an intervention from home before we go anywhere. Come. Hi. This is a right to when the doctor has broken the news uh, to the... Uh, okay, now, uh, we'll take this note and then we will move on. So this is okay. from Jacqueline in from Surrey. Surrey. Okay. okay, who does Jacqueline want to replace? Alan. Interventionist replace Alan. <laughs> <laughs> the human yo-yo. And we're back in the diagnosis again. <coughs> Where do you want to start from? Uh, just, uh, you've, uh, you've broken the news and we both have found out exactly. Um. Okay, actually, so uh, Alan, yeah, starts over there. That's right. Here, so we've just given the diagnosis. Here we go. There's nothing that we can do for it, Ida. It's terminal. It's terminal. <laughs> So what do you think we should do? Like, this is very devastating for my mother and me. It is very devastating, Alan. Ida. I'm sorry that it's not good news. It's not you. So, what do you want me to do? Find a cure. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, there is no cure. There is no cure. I don't know. I we, I don't know. We uh, we want somebody to help us walk through what what's just happened to us. This is a big thing for us. That her life would change, my life would change, and we need to sort out this. Uh, and I can't do it alone. You don't have to do it alone, Alan. You don't have to do it alone, Ida. There are people here. I can help and other people can help too. You can help. I okay. Can, I can be part of the help. Okay. Okay, so I would, what I would like to do is that you spend some time with us and we can sort this out. Okay. Okay, I'm going to stop this. Interesting, very interesting. This intervention links up to this intervention. Mm -hmm. um, Jacqueline in Surrey, in a sense, wants um, a patient advocate, which just happened a little while earlier in the theater here. Um, Ida, I want to ask you a question. There's something about what, this is Saide, by the way, Saide is also one of the telephone actors. Um, when when Saide brings this intervention in, 
your relation to the news is different all of a sudden. There's something about her being here, this Alan, that's different for you. What is that? Maybe it's the wear and tear of doing this for a month and a half. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, if I can say, I think, you know, uh, certainly the wear and tear comment is probably, it, it has a truth to it. However, we're in a very theatrical and symbolic place here. And, you know, uh, e energy, I don't want to sound, you know, too new agey on you, but energy is a real thing. And I think that the energy of this Alan is very different from the energy of the other Alan. Many of you are nodding your heads yes. And it makes something else possible. And it's not something that's necessarily spoken, it's a presence. Yeah. And Ida's angry. She has a right to be angry. And in the scene that we see, the way we see it, she never gets a chance to express that anger. Something about this Alan let you do that. An intangible thing. And I think it's important to recognize that. And then Alan, you push through and there's going to be help probably from him because you're asking specific questions. And maybe even somebody else come in. Yeah, and uh, what Jacqueline really wanted to, that uh, for them this is a new, so uh, if you need to deal with your feelings first before mm -hmm. we go to the, any other care or anything. Okay, thing. thank you, Saide, and thank you, Jacqueline. Okay, we are going to move on. Um, Alan is serving food, please. Where do you want to go from? From right here. From right where we are. He's, he's just coming in. Uh, he just put the tray down. Is that right? <coughs> okay, I'm going to give you this. Okay? Um, Alan, you're going to be here for a long time. Yeah. 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 It's a time when we really need to wrap up things, talk about things that maybe we haven't gotten around to for a long time. So I want to be here. And I want to know what you're thinking, what's important, what you want to hear from me. And I want to ask you, too, more about your life so I will have a complete picture. I really want to spend time with you now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's a very gentle, very generous intervention. I'm going to ask Ida. Out of what this Alan has just said to you, what is your expectation of what's going to happen? Out of what this Alan has just said to you, what is your expectation of what's going to happen? that we're, our relationship will get to a place where it's never gone before. Um, and I'm, I won't be so alone. Yeah. Okay. Um, Alan, are you going to be here more? Is that what you're talking about? Are you, uh, uh, are you, are you going to fly in and stay longer? Are you moving here? What is it you're doing? Well, that's... The way in which we can spend time together will have to be worked out because Alan has his work. But there are lots of ways to do it. You can talk more on the phone. You can possibly um, use a tape recorder to send longer um, communications back and forth. Um, and as much as possible, yes, I think Alan will try to make time in his schedule to be here. 
because what I was thinking was that Alan would want to be here, um, not just at the very end, but during the period when Ida is able to to share things with him and help to tie up the, the, the loose ends. So often, we wait too long to say the things and ask the questions that we have. And that's the time that Alan and I need to spend together. Okay, you know this intervention, uh, you just articulated something that I was thinking, which is that, you know, forum is all about timing and, and looking at, at micro moments sometimes. And um, the diagnosis has made things very important for Alan. Things that perhaps weren't important before. Uh, you know, I want to acknowledge that. And, and that if those things were important earlier, then it might be that this would be different now, if you know what I mean. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? And, and, but sometimes it takes a crisis like this to bring a relationship into focus. Um, thank you very much. Okay, um, we're going to go to, uh, there are things we need to talk about, yeah? Decisions are going to have to be made that I don't want to have to make. I mean, there are decisions that you should make. Like what? Where do you want to be? How am I supposed to know? I want to be here as long as I can manage. Where do I want to die? Stop. Stop. We have another intervention from home. Far from Vancouver. Barbara in Vancouver. Who is Barbara want to replace? Uh, the mother. Ida. And where are we? <laughs> right here. Right here. Okay. <laughs> so Alan is just saying there are things we need to discuss? Yes, or a bit more. Close to the end. Uh, so that, uh, near the end, they might have to put you on a machine. It's there? Okay, here we go. Yes. Nice and long. Near, near the end, mom. Huh? You might put you onto machines. I don't, I don't want any machines. I don't want to go away to hospitals or nursing homes or anything. I don't want any social workers or doctors or army of nurses around me. I want to be here at home. I don't care about my dignity. I want enough painkillers to deal with my pain. And I want to be left alone, quietly here. Again, I want enough painkillers. I want to feel good, but I want to be here. Do you understand that? Is that clear? Much more. You want to? You want to go? I told you I don't want to go anywhere. I want to be here. Okay, in my home. I don't want to suffer, but I don't want people around me driving me crazy. <laughs> Just one moment, please. I'll come to you, okay? I'll have to, I mean, I have to talk to Dr. Palmer. I mean, I have to. Well, if you're going to talk with Dr. Palmer, would you bring up the, the technician? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Dr. Palmer, would you come here? We're going to do this. <coughs> Alan, you said you would do this, yes? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're doing what your mother has asked you to do. You're, you're going to Dr. Palmer's office. You're going to give him this news. Hi, Alec. Dr. Palmer. You haven't spoke to my mom, have you? Okay. Here it is. She wants you. You know, like euthanasia, right? She wants you. You know, she doesn't want anything. She doesn't want doctors. She, doesn't, she just wants painkillers. And that's all. She wants to stay at home. She doesn't want to go to the hospital, okay? That's what she wants. Alan, I think some of what your mom says can be done. If she wants to be at home, we can try and keep her at home. We can look at pain management at home. But her question about euthanasia, I can't help her with that, Alan. There's nothing I can do about that. How long, how long, how long does it take? I mean, she's talking about it now, and I mean, it seems like she's gonna die. 
Is she gonna die soon? I don't know, Ellen. I don't know what's happening now that she's talking about it today. Yeah. Why is she talking about it today, do you know? Is it a bad day for her? I don't know. I mean, sometimes, you know, she just starts, she gets into these, you know, these moods or, I don't understand. I mean, I don't know what's going through my mom's body or what she's feeling. Alan, I think it's important for us to try and talk to her more and find out why it is that she's asking for that. Maybe there's something that we can do that she doesn't realize that we can do, that we're not, that would make it easier for her. Do you okay. want me to come and see her? Okay, I'm going to stop this here. Okay. Um, is it Barbara? Barbara. Barbara. Okay, so Victor, when you talk to Barbara, um, this this conversation about euthanasia with the son it is is a, a real option. You think? I think that Barbara wanted the mother to to stay home to bring up the euthanasia as an option. Very very real. A very real option. option. For her okay. And um, she was very clear about not going to the hospital and not being in that environment of fertility and running <coughs> Okay, Alan, I can see you seen. Your mother brings us up. You look miserable. Oh, yeah, this is, so this is not good news for you. I mean, tell me, damn. Okay, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. And I'm like, I'm not even there. I'm not even at the beginning yet. I mean, I just heard, I'm just starting to absorb my mom's cancer, pancreas, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, perhaps because I tell you to, you go and you talk to the doctor. Okay. <laughs> 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 yes, what you want. Yes, he opens up the door, but uh, my sense is it's not what he wants to hear. Right? He, you, you, uh, Ida has told him something he didn't want to hear. We, we can see that. We have timed the production of this play now for a reason. About nine months ago, Dr. Morrison in Halifax was charged with murder. And that's, the court case is on now, and that's why we're running the play now. So this is a very timely intervention from Barbara. Um, Dr. Palmer, uh, you're not going to say yes to this. I mean, part of what, what Alan's saying to me makes me glad, because I'm hearing what Ida wants. She wants to be at home. She wants to come for medications only. That makes my work easier in a way. But the last part, no. OK, but something else I think is going to happen from this. Because she's made the request and it's gone through her son to the doctor, other things are going to happen, it seems to me. That this is a push from her for something, and it's going to, it means, so there's other things that are going to occur, is that right? Mm -hmm. Like what? Well, certainly she's brought the heat up on the issues of what she wants about being at home and comfort medication. I mean, Alan's brought this forward. I'm going to be there soon to talk to her to try and figure out why it is that she's asking for euthanasia again, as I said to Alan, to see if there's something there that we can do that she doesn't realize that we can do for her. So it changes in that way. And she's, she's taking control. Okay. And, you know, uh, in respect to the request that Barbara's making, um, you know, because this is also about tactic, is that this request can't go to that doctor because he's going to say no. That's another thing that we learn here right in this intervention. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Barbara. Okay, um, Alan, uh, we've had this conversation. Could we bring the rest of the food quickly, please? And we're going to go to the pills. Stop. Should I ask you who you would replace? I would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I don't know if I have power over that. Um, and uh, where would you go from? Right here. 
Right here when she dumps the pills out? Yep. Okay. Do you, are, are you going to want to speak? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just be here with this so you don't have to yell, okay? Here we go. Somebody help me with these pills. I can't get them out. I can't open the jars. I don't know what they say. Get me one of those. Get me a nurse that knows what's happening. Explain it and help me. I want a box that has my pills so I know what I'm taking, what time I can take it. This is a mess. I don't understand it. And it bothers me. And it upsets me. And I don't want it anymore. Well, let's go get one. How are we going to do that? I want to know why there hasn't been a home care nurse come into this situation and why there isn't. Well, keep playing the scene. Oh, okay. How is Ida going to get this? Get me, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, but Alan's out of town and Dr. Palmer isn't here. Well, I can phone somebody. Uh, I'm not here either. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a phone. The phone's in there. <laughs> you need that walker. Who is it? Who's in your phone? You, you, but who do you want to talk to? Anybody in the hospital? Whoever answers, I'll talk to Somebody in the hospital is going to answer. Yeah. Hello, Hello, is this the hospital? Uh, yes. Who am I talking to? This is the uh, operator at the hospital. Get me a doctor that can help me with my pain and help me figure out my pills. This is Ida, and I am really upset. Ida, who is your doctor? Dr. Palmer. Do you want me to call his office or reach yes, him? Yes, I want him. Okay. I'll do that. Okay, What's your thank phone you. number? <laughs> Can you do it quickly? I'll do it quickly, I know. Thank you. Okay. Okay, um, let's come out of here. <laughs> <Let's just come. laughs> so, I, 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 you, know, you know, we're here we are in the theater, but I will say that this was real. This was very real. Uh, Ida is sitting in the chair going, I want this, get me this, get me this, but there's, you know, there's, there isn't anybody here to do that for you. Ida's alone. And, and we see the strong desire. And we see the frustration. And the expectation that it's going to happen. Right? It was very, very strong for us here in the theater. Uh, and you want the phone to be there, don't you? And it's, and it's over there. Yeah, it's a long way away. Um, and it's interesting to me. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, who did you think was going to answer the phone at the hospital? It didn't matter. It didn't I matter. I wanted those pills in a thing I can understand, so that I can not have to go through all that garbage to get to them, where it was simple, I could see it, and what time I could take it. And okay. I wanted it now. It was long overdue. OK, I'm saying, uh, I here is talking about something called a dosette. I'm going to ask you. Who knows what that is? Can I see some hands? And who doesn't know what that is? Can I see some hands? Yeah, pretty, pretty much 50-50. And that's real. And it's really basic. And in order for you to know to ask for one, you've got to know what it is, don't you? This Ida, because, what, what, what's your real name? Ruth? Ruth knows. And so this Ida knows. But our Ida doesn't know. So how does she find out? Um, this doctor has a doctor. <laughs> the dilemma is very real. As patients, we have to be informed. Yeah? yeah? Anything you want to say before you go? No, just thank you for letting me have my say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to suggest, please, that we move over into the hospital. Can we build the hospital quickly, please? While they're doing that, I'm going to have a chat with the whole audience just for a second. Um, if you've been surfing around, you know, the TV, uh, now that the Olympics are, they're over now, right? Now that the Olympics are over and you've hit this, and you're going, what is going on? Here's what's happening. We're at the Roundhouse Community Center. This is a live interactive television event. It's called The Dying Game. Here's what you can do. If, as you're watching this play, you identify with a character, uh, you identify with the struggle that they're in. And you think you have an idea about how by taking their place, 
you can navigate your way through the situation they're in and deal with the situation differently to have it turn out better, healthier, somehow. Call one of these numbers, 644-8379 or 644-9653. You will talk to an actor on the telephone. That actor will ask you some questions and then come into the theater and do the intervention for you. I ask you please, if you are going to call, try to engage in the struggles of the characters and not just turn them into different people that you might wish they would be. We learn more out of the struggle than we learn out of a magic intervention. Okay. Um, Here we are in the hospital. And we're going to go from the bell rings. Here we go. They're busy out there right now, Mom. What do you want? Stop. Help. Stop. Oh, we have an intervention from home. Is this in the hospital? Yeah, right at this moment. Right at this moment. Wow, that was fast. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, from who? This is from Daphne in Vancouver. Daphne in Vancouver. Who does Daphne want to replace? Uh, the mother. Intervention is to replace Ida. <laughs> <laughs> know that we made a decision in rehearsal that whoever's Ida gets the ID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, and from the beginning of the scene? When he's right at the end of the bed, asking, okay. telling him. Start with the bells, the three bells, please. Okay, here we go. <coughs> the urgent ones. Yeah. <laughs> They're busy out there right now, Mom. What do you want? Can I, can I help? Alan, you make me feel very sad when you yell at me like that. You know, I'm just, I'm trying to phone me. I have to go to the bathroom and you have I to just, go? look, I, I know that we're here in the hospital and this whole situation is very, you know, stressful on all of us and I, I just wish that you would, you know, it's my last days and I just wish that maybe you could just come here and, you know, be my baby. And just hold me for a bit and I'm sorry. Just, uh, I'm not talking. Okay, but do you have to do you have to go? I mean <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I just sit down, just sit down for a moment. Please just relax and just I can't relax. I can't relax right now, okay? I'm asking you as your mother to just please relax and just you know, hold my hand and you know that that's what's making me feel better, not all this medicine. Yeah. Okay? okay? So just stay here. You're, you'll stay here with me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay? Okay. Now, I'm going to stop this here. Come on. Come out. I'm not very quiet in here. <laughs> uh, this is Wendy. Wendy is, of course, also one of the telephone actors. So, um, Daphne, uh, when you talk to Daphne, is part of that conversation that actually having to having to go to the washroom isn't as urgent as the contact with the sun? Or is that No, that's that has nothing to do with the intervention. Her having to go to the bathroom. Okay, so the, the core of this intervention really is in making contact with Alan. Yeah, that's right. Okay. He, she wishes that he would be more affectionate with her. because um, it, it it is her last days and she just wants to you know, she feels that there is something missing in their relationship and she wishes that it would be better and I guess she has to make the first move in that. And by asking him, okay, hold my hand or be more affectionate with me and... Okay, you know, the thing that we see in the scene actually, and, and, and I heard you react to it, <coughs> is that Ida has dirty the bed. And she says, you know, it's just not important to come and sit down. And in a sense, that breaks through many things in this scene. And it is the reality of the scene. Um, in that moment, because that, that moment is what played, mm -hmm. what, what, what was happening to you? I got, I, I got the, I mean, I got the message when she said, you know, it doesn't matter, that doesn't matter. I mean, I felt uncomfortable. I mean, being beside my mom and I mean, she wet herself, you know. But then that got to me like, does not matter, Mom, that you're like this? You want to be beside me, like you'd, you'd rather be like, you know, wet and everything than, you know, and be beside me. So that's 
Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You know, these are very basic things that we're dealing with here all of a sudden, and there, there's primal stuff about it, and it can be hard. It can be very difficult. Parents and kids. Okay, um, Alan has been in the room. Does anybody else from here have another idea in this moment before we let it go? Well, I don't, I don't okay. buy any of this. Well, uh, wait, wait, wait. If you, wait I, it's not about discussion, though. It's got to be here. It's not right. about discussion. Right. It's got to be here. I don't buy, I don't buy no, this. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. wait no? Wait. Oh, I can't come up. Who would you okay. replace is the question. Well. Who would you replace? Well, certainly not Miss Armstrong. I mean, um, Ida. I don't buy Who would you replace? the owl. Okay, come and be owl. Okay, I don't really want to, but. Well, you uh, have all to. right. You, uh, I don't buy. No, no, no. Yeah. No, there is no discussion. <laughs> the discussion is through action. So if you want to do an intervention, it, that's wonderful. If okay. you want to be all here right, and talk no, about it, then no. No, okay. Okay. Is there an idea that somebody wants to do through action? Okay, we'll move on. Um, Alan has come and gone. Uh, Dr. Palmer is coming into the room. Hi, Ida. How are you feeling? Okay. How are your legs? They don't belong to me. The edema, Ida. Everything's shutting down. It's going to move up your body. Stop. Stop. Where did that come from? Here. Come. Who would you replace? Dr. Palmer. Intervention to replace Dr. Palmer. And I'm going to ask this for an obvious reason. You identify that he's in a struggle. Yes. Okay. You're going to get close. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get a stethoscope, <laughs> and where do you want to go from? Um, walk me into the room. Okay, I'm going to um, I'm going to give you this too. Okay, so people in the key. From when Dr. Palmer enters the room, uh, the reality of our play, just to, for you to start from somewhere, is there's something important happening over there, and he sees Ida, and he remembers he hasn't seen her in a while, so he comes in. Okay, okay. So I'd like to change that to start. Well, you do whatever you're going to do. <laughs> Morning, Ida. Hi, it's Dr. Palmer. Yeah. How are you doing? A1. <laughs> uh, excellent. Do you mind if I sit down? No. Well, I'll just sit on your bed. Is that okay? Sure. You're feeling A1, eh? Yeah. What does that mean? It means... Um, hmm? It means I'm lying. I thought so. Pretty rough time for you, isn't it? I I don't sleep so much. I'm not here, mm -hmm. and um, and when I go, what's gonna happen? And um. You having a lot of pain? Yeah. Is the morphine working? Well, what's it supposed to do? Well, we're trying to control your pain but not make you too sleepy. That's what we're trying well, to do. Well, that's not working. It's not, eh? Well, I'm glad you told me. Yeah. We can try some other things. Okay. You know, I, uh, I've, uh, you're a relatively new patient for me, you know. 
And uh, we've always talked about cancer and this test and that test. And I think we should get to know you as a person. Well, you know when, uh, when, it, when I came over to your place the day when Alan came over? Yeah. You said something, when, when I said you had cancer, you said something about both your parents. Yeah. Well, what about both your parents? Well, one had lung cancer and one had the colon cancer. Mm-hmm. And how old were you at the time? Thirty. Thirty. So you remember all of that, eh? Oh, sure. And, and what happened to your mom? Did she suffer a lot? They both did. Really? Well, they suffer with, did they suffer with pain? Mm -hmm. Is that what scares you? Yes. Well, listen, I can promise you things are different these days. We, we can control your pain and we'll try to use something different for morphine, hopefully help your pain and not make you uh, too sleepy and so on. Can I ask you something else, Ida? Yes. You know, Alan came over to the office the other day, and he said you were asking, he, he was uh, saying that you wanted to ask about euthanasia. What was all that about? The sooner the better, I think. Why is that? Well, I mean, if you can fix the pain, then okay, then I won't do it right now. But later, I could do it. Then so, it gets worse, okay? So I'm going to sleep now. No, no, I <laughs> I know you're tired, but this is very important. <laughs> Ida, listen, just one more thing. Okay, listen, we, we have to finish this conversation. I'm, I, want, I want to be clear about what you're saying. Are you saying that if you're free of pain, then you won't think of euthanasia or won't ask for euthanasia? Am, am I correct in assuming that? Or do you mean something else? Yeah, no. Now. 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 And what about later? Well, I don't know. How about, okay, listen, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Okay. Okay? Thank Thanks you, Ida. See you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sorry I haven't been coming so regularly, but from now on it's going to be every day. <laughs> You do. Yeah, you have this air of a, you have a wonderful bedside man. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you, uh, because th this Dr. Palmer that you present us with is a much gentler, kinder, less busy, <coughs> a more incisive, kind of uh, energy prone, you know, doctor than our Dr. Palmer. That's okay. What is it that a doctor has to get through? to become this doctor rather than that doctor. I believe there are things that a human being has to overcome in order to do what we just saw. Do you have an insight into what th those things are? I think it's, uh, you know, forgetting for a moment that, uh, that you're the doctor. Uh-huh. And you, you sort of take your doctor hat off and you try and uh, just try and be a good friend or a good human being or whatever and try to understand the person not the disease or the patient and all that sort of stuff and um, somehow get to know them as a person understand their fears uh, see if you can address some of their fears talk in uh, non-technical, you know, language um, and, you know, do a few things like sit on the bed or, you know, sit by the, ch uh, sit on a chair by the bed, take your time, don't rush, allow people to talk um, 
and don't be afraid to explore difficult issues um, because you're as uncomfortable as they are. And the reason no one's talking about you is because we both would like to talk about it, but we're both so uncomfortable that we don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So let's make it easier for the patient to talk about things like that, particularly if she's brought it up earlier. Okay. And uh, I think just, you know, just let things flow. Thank you for the opportunity. Just, yeah, you're welcome. Just, just before you go, you know, there's, there's, this is a relationship, just like any relationship. The doctor-patient relationship is, you know, there's lots of relationships in our lives. And, and I will observe through these forms and my own experiences that it's possible for this relationship to turn to become very unequal. And, you know, patients do that to doctors. And I think doctors, some doctors, not all doctors, some doctors also do that to patients. Um, you know, uh, for Ida, for our Ida in our play, doctors are gods. And you don't question them and you don't bother them. And as she does in her home when he comes to visit, she puts makeup on. So she won't look unhealthy for her doctor. And, and I believe that that's real for people. And so, you know, what we break through here is uh, what you talked about in the very beginning is not be a doctor, be a person, in a sense. And, and, and I think there's a message in there for patients, and whether we're in the medical field or not, we are all patients is we can demand that of our doctors as well. We can catch them and go, stop being a doctor <laughs> for a minute. <laughs> and I think it's hard to do, but possible to do. And I think part of what I'm hearing from you is that people need the permission to do that. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Where in the play is this? It's right. We have to move on, I'm sorry. Oh. Okay, um, we're going to move on from here. Dr. Palmer has come and gone. Uh, we're going into the pillow. Speaking, do you think? Yes. You will. Okay, I'm going to um, I'm going to try to follow you around. Is, is what I'll do. Okay, don't let me disturb you. Again, it's gotten very quiet in here. I, I want to ask you something. Al. Yeah. Yeah? Um, yes, yes, yes. Um, in order to get from here, which is where you start, to where you went, yeah. is a long journey. Yeah? Is there a turning point for this Alan in that journey that you have an insight into? Yeah. No matter how painful it is to see someone 
pain like that. Um, when consider doing that, I talked to her first, mm -hmm. which is what I did. Right. Okay, and it was a lovely moment. Okay, thank you very, very much. Stop. Who would you replace? Uh, Ida, just before, um, you know, just before the pillow. Okay, we're no, in. No, not in the other scene. But he's feeding her there? Yeah, he's okay. feeding Okay. Intervention is replace Ida. This is from Michael Bye. in Vancouver. Right, get up. <laughs> <laughs> we have to give you the ID. Okay. It is nighttime and Alan is feeding Ida. I'm going to be here with the mic so it can stay intimate, okay? No. Shake your body out. <laughs> Side yes. this intervention from Michael. Does Michael talk about, um, you know, uh, here in, uh, there's tremendous diversity here in Vancouver, and not all of the, you know, I, I know we go into a hospital situation, and and it doesn't always reflect who, yes. who makes up Vancouver. So, I'm just wondering if he talked about that at all, or yeah, he uh, he said he's a Roman Catholic and he wanted a priest to come. Okay. So I I just chose not to go for a priest. All right. Okay. But the point was to get the spirituality, and you know that the doctors take care of your body. Nobody's looking how you would do that. Okay, Alan, your mom asks for this, and you have almost nothing to. It's laden with emotion, but not a lot of words. Why? I know my mom. And in this, she's very, I mean, she always talks about God, you know. And of course, of course she would want, I mean, why did I think of it? Why did I think of it earlier? Like, I'm, I almost feel ashamed that I'm, I did not think of it. And I would go, like, get right on it, you know. And it's not something that, it, that for Alan has entered his head. He's now going, oh, right. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, just a very quick question. Um, Dr. Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> um, if Ida asks to see some kind of spiritual, religious person, mm -hmm. uh, um, what is available? Is, is there a whole array of... <laughs> Many to choose from. Um, <laughs> certainly, we would ask of her and her family whether there was someone specifically from their own um, church or organization that they would like to meet with, and often those people will come directly into the hospital. If there wasn't somebody specifically that they already knew about, there would be people available in the hospital to meet with them and try and meet their needs as well. Okay, good information. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you, Michael, very much. Okay, we can move on. We are beyond the pillow. Um, I've got some more ice going into. Okay. Yeah. 
Are we doing again? Uh, if I could end this, would you want me to? Oh. <laughs> Very quickly. Here we go. Look, Mom. If I could end this, would you want me to? Why not? I don't want to put that burden on anyone. It's nighttime in the hospital. Oh, stop. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, am, am I thinking of dialogue that didn't happen in your play? Maybe I'm thinking of what happened this evening, but... Um, I don't know. Where are you? Well, right at the moment, where... Oh, okay, oh, come right. on. Let's see Who would you replace? Alan. Introduce you just replace Alan. And from asking the question? Yes. Yes, okay. I'm going to come over here with the mic. I'll ask you to kind of stay open, please, so people can see. Mm. Yeah? If I could stop this, would you want me to? How? I don't know how. There may, there must be ways. We've all heard of ways. There, there must be ways that don't cause pain. Sometimes you've said you want it, and sometimes you've said you don't. I don't know what to do. I can't stand watching you like this. If I could end it, would you have me do that? What time? I don't want you to go to jail. It's your choice. I will follow you if you want to make that choice. We can make it your choice. We can make it so that you do it. It doesn't have to be. I'm not going to like it, but I'm willing to follow you there if you if you want to. It's it's up to you. You said sometimes you want to do it, and sometimes you don't. I don't know what to do. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> that's not your fault. <laughs> If you want to take the control, tell me. I can make it possible for you to take control. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're relying. Uh, uh, don't go The nature of this then, which is uh, different from our scene, is <coughs> Alan starts to ask the question. She says, I don't want to put the burden on anybody. He goes, okay, and he goes. But you don't do that. You, you, you push through it a little bit. Mm. And so, Ida, this Alan really leaves the door open for you. Yeah. Yeah, and you know that, yes? He heard what I was really saying. Yes, he heard what you were really saying. And, and, and what he's told you is that, uh, uh, I think what I'm hearing is he's saying, I don't need to go to jail. We can facilitate this, and if you want to, I can make this happen. Is, is, is that, I don't know. Is that she's, she's a smart lady. She's seen the news. She knows how things work. I mean, she must have clued in at some point that people can take their own lives. So there's been a lot of suicide in this family, a lot of discussion of it. I mean, suicide tendencies in me as Alan. She's tried to take pills. I couldn't not know about that somewhere in my mind. Right. I couldn't not know that she's had these conversations with someone. I mean, some of this must be in the air. It can't not be in the air. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm going to ask you a question I don't know. This might be an unfair question to ask you, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Do you think that you're going to get to a point where you're going to take him up on this offer somehow? I could. You could. And so the, the opening of the door, it really is an opportunity. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, we have to move on. Uh, Alan, please, quickly. Um, into Dad. It's dark in the hospital.
Yeah, probably Ida. It's your choice, but Ida, come, quickly. And where would you go from? Uh, she's just seen her father with it. Yep. Yeah. Now, um, the morphine in the play comes in uh, on the mic, but N Nurse Palmer could come in. Do you need the nurse to come in? Uh, no, morphine's not important. Okay. So, okay. I guess seeing her father is important. Okay, well, well I, what I'm doing is I'm acknowledging that in our scene, the arrival of the nurse interrupts what's going on. Okay, so before that. So uh, before the nurse comes in. Oh, I see. Actually, yeah. Let the nurse, is the nurse going to come? Yes, the nurse can come, yes. Okay, and go. Uh, well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> 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 it was the, okay, come on. Okay, the nurse will come and we'll see what happens. Here we go. Have we got the sound cue? Go ahead. So you're up. Okay, so I'm up. And you're seeing. It's time for your morphine, Ida. Alan, can I, can I speak to you about something? Yeah. What? Doctor, do you mind if I speak to you? It's my son. Nurse. Sure. Nurse, hello. <laughs> <laughs> What happened? Um, Ellen, I want to speak to you about, um, this is inevitable. I, I'm going to go. You know that. I know that. I want, I want to think about the journey in some respects. Um, I want to think about how I'm going to go. I want, I want to talk about what, we're going to, what you're going to do when I'm gone. I want to talk about the funeral and um, I want my friends to be there. I want to talk about this with you. Is that Dan Shang? Yeah. Now? Now. Now's good. Now's good. I don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. I don't want to go unprepared into this completely. You know, I want, I want to think about the next step now. You know? Do you understand me? I, I, want, I, want, I, want, I want a funeral. I want, I want a great show. I want, I want these things might be silly, but no, they're not silly, Mom. No, no. Can you can you invite, can you make sure all my friends come? Make sure everybody's there. Okay, and have a party too. Okay, I would. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, cry, but drink. Okay. 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 So seeing dad inspires this, is that, is that, yeah, this is, you intervene in this moment, so it must be for a reason. Well, I was going to wipe the letter, but I thought maybe the time was running out. <laughs> <laughs> well, the tide is running out, in fact, uh, for everybody, for us and for Ida and uh, for everybody. So this isn't necessarily about dad. I mean, it's about, it's about, at this point, I think she's accepted that it's, she's seen the kind of, I mean, the spirit, whether it exists or not, of, of some, of her, of her, of her father, and I mean, it's time to think about about closing this in some respects, and to introduce probably she's probably feeling something transcendent a little, a little bit here. And I think the thinking about how I'm going to leave this life, and I mean, I don't know, she doesn't know what's going to happen after what us do, right? But just just kind of introduce that element to the whole thing, okay. and to think about passing on dignity. Yeah, I think that point has been reached. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, we have almost run out of time here. Um, we're going to need to skip over cops, and we're going to go straight into this end scene. We have time for one very fast intervention. Um, I mean, really fast. So can we get the bed over? You know what the scene is at the end of a play. Does anybody have an idea for the end of this play? I'll let Alan move the bed over. Anybody here? Quick, but you've, you've, well, we, Just a sidebar? We don't have time for discussion, I'm sorry. An idea from somebody at the end of the play. We get into the doctor's office. We finish this whole part here. What would you do? 
Come, quickly, please. I'm going to ask you to do this in 30 seconds, okay? 30 seconds. <laughs> Who would you replace? Alan. Intervention is to replace Alan. Go. So sorry. Things aren't going well. They just ram the down my throat and suck their lungs out. This isn't working. She doesn't need this. Alan, there are things that we don't need to do. You're right, she is dying. What I hear you asking for is that you want us to focus on comfort. Is that right? I think that's what we both want. She had, neither of us had any idea of something like that. I can't keep doing it. No, I think you're right. We can do the things to keep her comfortable, Alan. That's all we can do right now. Okay. I'm going to ask you, do you get what you want here from this doctor in this moment? Yes. What is that that you want? I wanted to listen and I wanted to acknowledge that we don't have to do everything to keep her alive. That we don't have to cause more pain in order to prolong death. Okay. Are you going to listen? Is this going to change something? It, at this point it makes it very easy for me to, to make that switch from care for cure to care for comfort solely. He's giving me permission. He's saying that that's what he thinks his mother wants, that's what he wants. So it makes my job easier in a way. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we're gonna have to wrap this up. Can I have the cast and the telephone actors out here, please? Um, yeah, could the rest of the phone actors come out here, please, while I'm talking? You know, this work is a circle. It starts in reality. In the case of this production, it begins in the reality of my journey with my mother. In the creation of the play, and then in the workshop and in the rehearsals, we made images of that reality. Not images of fantasy. Images of reality. And then here in the theater tonight and with the audience at home, we've transformed those images. We've taken them apart and we've put them back together again. And in doing that, of course, the hope is that we learn things. But that circle, reality, images of reality, and transforming images of reality is not complete. Unless we take what we learn back out of here, back out of the theater, back to reality, back to our lives and use it, because of course, we're all Ida. Of course we are. This is a natural part of our lives. And so how do we do this well? I hope there's been insights into that this evening, both for you here in the theater and for you at home. Um, thank you very much. You've been wonderful to work with. Thank you very much, and good night.